This video is the first of six videos going through the 60 questions on the practice ACT math test. So again, this is the first one. We're going to do problems one through 10. Problem number one. The blood type of 150 people were determined for a study shown in the figure below. So we have 150 people. If a person from the study is randomly selected, what's the probability that person is either type A or type AB? We have 67 people and six people. So 67 plus six divided by 150, 67 plus six, 73 over 150, the answer is D. Problem number two. The monthly fees for a single room at five colleges are 373.10, 380, 340, 310.00 respectively. What's the mean of these monthly fees? Well, the mean would be the average. So 370 plus 310 plus 380 plus 340 plus 310, all divided by 5. So we'll put that into the calculator. 370 plus 310 plus 380 plus 340 plus 310. That's 1710 divided by 5 is 342. So the answer for this problem number 2 is 342. Problem number 3. On a particular road map, one half inch represents 18 miles. About how many miles apart are two towns that are two and a half inches apart on the map? So two and a half inches, that would be five half inches um, or five times half an inch, right? Well, if there are five half inch segments and a half inch segment is 18 miles, five times 18 is, let's pull this up, five times 18 is 90. Now, one common error that, that people have in the answer 45 would be in here, if you just multiply 5 halves times 18, 2 goes in there once, 2 goes in there 9, 5 times 9 is 45. This is not the right answer, but it's a common wrong answer. Problem number 4. Given that F is equal to CD to the third, you're given F and D, find C. So you would do 450 is equal to C times 10 to the third. 450 is equal to C times 1,000. Divide both sides by 1,000. You get 450 divided by 1,000 is equal to C. Take off the zeros, 45 over 100 is equal to C, 0.45 is equal to C, which is F. Problem number five. You're given a function and you're asked to find F of one. Every place there's an X, replace it with one. So F of one is equal to three times one plus seven squared. Three times one is three plus seven is 10 squared. 100. Problem number six. There are actually two different ways to look at this problem. We will do um, kind of the more straightforward way first, and then I'll show you a second way to do it. So um, you're making $12 an hour and you're going to get a 6% raise. So $12 times 6%, we'll plug that into the calculator, 0.06. 72 cents. So your raise is 72 cents. 
That's not the question. The question is, what will the new hourly wage be? It'll be 12 plus 72 cents, which is 12.72 H. So that is kind of the, the easy, straightforward way to do it. But if you want to just plug something into your calculator and get 12.72, it's $12 times 1.06. And how do you get 1.06? 1, which is your hourly wage, plus a 0 0.06 or a 6% raise is 1.06. So if you multiply 12 by 1.06, this is 12 times 1. This is 12 times 0 0.06. So let's look at what happens when you plug it into your calculator. 12 times 1.06. Close parentheses, enter 1272. You get the same answer. It's a different way of thinking about the same problem. This is one step. This is multiple steps, but this is a more straightforward way to think about the problem. Problem number seven. The first term is one in a geometric sequence, one, negative three, nine, negative 27, so on. What is the seventh term of the geometric sequence? You probably haven't had geometric sequences yet. That is a pre-calculus thing. So let's just write the terms down that we have one, negative 3, 9, negative 27. It's asking for the seventh term. So let's just write up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we need to have three more terms. And to get from 1 to negative 3, you multiply by negative 3. Multiply by negative 3, multiply by negative 3, multiply by negative 3, multiply by negative 3, multiply by negative 3. Geometric sequence means to get the next term, you multiply, you multiply by the same number. Let's pull up calculator. Let's multiply by negative 3. So we're going to take negative 27 and multiply by negative 3. And we get 81. Multiply that by negative 3, and you get negative 243, which is answer A. It's incorrect, but they put it in there just in case you're calculating wrong. Multiply that by negative 3, and you get 729. So the seventh term is 729. That's the way you would step through uh, finding this. There are many, many other ways to do it, recursive, explicit, all sorts of different terms that go along with how to do um, sequences. You also have arithmetic sequences where you add the same thing to each term. So uh, sequences are a chapter or two in pre-calculus, a lot to cover. This is just a more straightforward way to go through and solve the problem. Problem number eight. Shipping rate for customers of ShipQuick consists of a fee per box and then a price per pound for each box. Given the table below, uh, we need to answer questions. Greg wants to ship one box, it weighs 15 pounds, so that means we're in the center row here. How much does it cost to ship the box? It's a $10 fee plus 65 cents per pound and it's a 15 pound package, so 10 plus 0.65 times 15. Don't need parentheses because order of operation will sort that all out for you. $19.75 to ship the package. Problem 9. You have a computer chip that is 0.32 centimeters thick, made up of layers of silicon. So the top and bottom layers are 0.03, and each of the inner layers is 0.02. How many inner layers are there? So 0.32, you have to subtract the top and the bottom layers, which are both 0.03, so subtract 0 0.06, 0 0.03 times 2, that gives you 0.26. So if the entire uh, inner part of the chip is 0.26 centimeters thick, and each layer is 0.02, that 
that means you have 13 layers. 0.26 divided by 0 0.02 is in fact equal to 13. So the answer is A, 13. Last problem of this video, problem number 10. The table below shows the number of cars Jing sold in the last month. What is the median of the data in the table? Well, median would be the middle term, so let's count how many terms we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we have a total of 12 terms, so the median is going to be the sixth term plus the seventh term divided by 2. So let's put these all in order and see what happens. Smallest term looks to be 13. And then we have a 15 and a 16. You'll notice I'm putting a tick mark next to each one as I write it. That way I know that I've already written it over here. And we have a 19. Then we have another 19. Are we done with the teens? 20, 20, yep. We're done with the teens. Now we have a 22. Then we have a 25. And we have another 25. So remember, we only do the sixth and seventh term. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the answer is between 22 and 25. 22 plus 25 divided by 2. The only number over here between 22 and 25 is 23.5. Circle it and move on. But let's just use the calculator to show that that's true. In parentheses, 22 plus 25, close parentheses, divided by 2 is 23.5. So we get the right answer. That concludes part 1 of the six-part video.